I study a neurological phenomenon called synesthesia using data from multiple languages. Three minutes, three questions. What is synesthesia? Why multiple languages? Why should you care? When most of you look at the text on this slide, you see it written in blue. But for about 2% of you, it all looks like this. Synesthetes experience letters of the alphabet as having a consistent color. Now by consistent, I mean a few things. Consistent across space. So if your S is purple here, it's purple there. Consistent across time. So if your H is burnt sepia today, it'll be the same burnt sepia in two years. Finally, intriguingly, consistent across people. For example, most synesthetes say that the letter A is red. Why? A is for apple, and apples are red. A is a warm sound. Red is a warm color. A is the first letter of the alphabet. Red is the first color of the rainbow. You could go on and on and on. Now, the problem with thinking like this is that each of these theories makes the same prediction. A is red. And so you can't tell them apart. But then I realized that they only make the same prediction in English. In Dutch, A is for ape, and apes are brown. In Spanish, A sounds like A. Ah. In Korean, A is not the first letter of the alphabet. G is. So I went and found some synesthetes, and it turns out Dutch A is still red. Spanish A is still red. But Korean G is red. And so by studying synesthesia in multiple languages, I can start figuring out the rules. For example, A is red because it's the first letter of the alphabet. Great. So Hopefully, some of you just find that interesting. But the rest, of you, <laughs> the rest of you might wonder why we bother studying something that's so rare and basically benign. Well, we can use synesthesia to study something that's much more fundamental. See, in the brain, synesthesia happens when the letter area and the color area get wired together by accident. And we can use this accident to our advantage. Here's how. Scientists know a great deal about how the color area is organized, in part because they can study it in monkeys. We know comparably little about how the letter area is organized, in part because monkeys can't read. <laughs> now, I can't go sticking an electrode in a human brain, but with synesthetes, I wouldn't have to. I can just ask them what color their letters are and use that to study the letter area. So in this way, synesthesia is a window into the brain that lets us literally see how the brain thinks about reading. Thank you.